Hello guys, it's Revolution. So as promised, I'm doing a dissection of the Dragon Ball Super Broly light novels. I did order this in from Japan over a month ago and I did promise you guys I would do so and I guess it's taken me my time, but there's a lot of pages to translate. Ultimately, I haven't managed to get them all translated because obviously translators are very busy with their own lives. So what I've decided to do instead is basically talk about some points of contention in the novel, which is maybe possibly new information on top of what we know from the movie and I'll basically put it on screen for you. I'll put the page on screen for you with the kanji and I can only really provide you with Google translations but there are definitely some interesting reveals. So look I'll provide you with the Google translation of it of course even I know that that isn't going to be the full translation of it. By all means go out your way ask your translator whoever that may be for the full translation if you don't agree with the Google translations. I am by no means a translator I am no authority on translations from kanji to English. There are a couple of things though that have gone beyond just the Google translations and I will go over it in this video but what is the Dragon Ball Super Broly light novel? Well when the movie was released on the exact same day the books were released. Now there are two Dragon Ball Super Broly light novels to my knowledge. I only have one of them and the one that I managed to get hold of was the one by Masatoshi Kusakabe and it is illustrated by Akira Toriyama. It's even got accreditations obviously noting the fact that Toriyama wrote the events of this movie. Look in terms of its legitimacy it's basically very legitimate. It comes from Jump. It is a different section from what releases the manga, but ultimately it's still from Jump and it has all the necessary accreditation. I own the Daisen shoes, the super exciting guides, other Dragon Ball guides, and you know, they look very similar. I mean, it has plenty of information, plenty of advertising for the rest of Dragon Ball Super, typically what you would get from a Dragon Ball Jump product. And <laughs> if you even doubt its legitimacy, the moment you read it, and I have admittedly read it through a Google Translator, even though I do believe I've gotten the main gist of the story, you know, it becomes quite obvious that it is basically a play-by-play -play of the movie with extra information. It's not littered with a lot of extra information, but there's no way in hell that they could have got this much right without Eva seeing the movie itself beforehand. Obviously, it would have had to have been way beforehand to keep up with the production of the books or seen the script beforehand. The book has plenty of images that seem to be from the movie itself. I don't know if these particular shots were illustrated by Toriyama himself or they were just ripped from the movie. I'm just basically not good enough at all to be able to distinguish the two. But ultimately, when you read the play-by-play -play of the fights, exactly what happens in the movie, the exact choreography of the fights, developed in this book. But obviously because it's a novel as opposed to a manga or an anime, it's a different medium, it has different strengths that it can use to its advantage. And one thing it definitely does use to its advantage is gives us certain perceptions from certain characters in certain moments. It simply goes more in depth on certain things as well. And there's definitely some interesting things that I've seen debated in the past that will be settled by this particular light novel. Now, first of all, just before we get into the story, you get this character guide. It's basically attached to the book. As you can see by my images on your screen right now, it does look a bit crumpled because I can't pull it off, well at least I don't want to pull it off of the actual novel itself. It basically has a character guide for all the characters in Dragon Ball Super other than Gogeta. Obviously Gogeta was supposed to be some big super surprise, but it has Broly, the villains, basically a villain side, which obviously Broly, Chi Lai and Lemo aren't really truly villains, but you know, it's basically the enemy side. And then it has the hero side, which has Goku, Vegeta, Piccolo, Wee, Spearus, Bulma. This is a character guide for the Broly movie that is from Jump. This is something I've gone beyond Google translations to find out if it's the correct translation. It is. It states that Broly is the Sakyo no Senshi, meaning strongest warrior. Obviously, this is right next to the base Broly picture. It obviously is referring to the Super Saiyan full power Broly that you can see a little image next to it. Basically all of these on the character pages are simply just naming the translations, nothing special. Obviously fusion isn't involved in this because as well it's a fusion, that's a fused warrior, as well as the fact that Whis isn't really a warrior, he's not allowed to be a warrior, and of course Beerus might be involved in this. I don't really know. This is not part of the novel itself, it's just attached to the novel. It isn't from the writer's opinion or maybe a mishap from the writers. This is from Jump. Basically, it's a character guide and it outright states that Broly is the mysterious strongest warrior. Whis is definitely a third party character in terms of the involvement in fights, but Beerus, I'm not really sure if he is or not. Um, but what it does do is it brings into the fact that all the warriors that came before this point, Broly is the strongest. 
I think you know who that includes, guys. Tournament of Power is referenced numerous times throughout this novel, not just once like it was in the movie. So anyway, I've written down a few things that may either be new information from the movie. It's basically bullet points, I'll just go through it. On page 20, there is a conversation that Vegeta... <laughs> this is funny, the main reason I've written it down is because it's literally a gag on Vegeta now. Vegeta had the highest numbers ever in terms of power level as a baby ever recorded. I'm not sure if that was stated in the movie or not, you'll have to remind me, but the funny thing is, is it's typical, isn't it? Vegeta gets the highest numbers ever, and of course Broly comes along and shits all over it. <laughs> anyway, on to page 57. Basically, there's a conversation between Frieza and his servant that getting rid of the Saiyans, as he does when he destroys planet Vegeta, is actually going to rip his whole force in half. The Saiyans made up half of the Frieza force, yet Frieza willingly got rid of them all. Now obviously there's the whole thing of him being afraid of the legend of Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan God as we saw in Dragon Ball Minus. But don't forget, in the manga, and even the anime to an extent, they imply that Beerus was the one who gave the order to Frieza to actually destroy Planet Vegeta. Now it may have been a bit of both of those reasons why he did it, but you know, it must have come a loss to him at that time, particularly as he never saw truly believed that a Super Saiyan would actually come along and defeat him. I mean, losing half an army is a pretty big loss, to be honest. On page 58, the Saiyans didn't actually know what Frieza's attack was. Now, this has been a massive debate for a long time. Obviously, the Bardock special kind of showed Bardock in a particular way, and the Saiyans actually fighting back against Frieza. But the novel kind of goes a little bit more in depth about it, that basically Frieza just asked all the Saiyans to gather at a certain place so they could have a talk. But obviously, the moment they saw a giant light up in the sky, which was Frieza's attack, it was too late. This is important because at that point, these characters actually couldn't sense Other's key. So to them, it would have just appeared as a giant light. Look, it was a sneaky attack by Frieza, but ultimately would it have done anything anyway if had they all rebelled against this particular attack? But, you know, it does make sense. It makes sense within the lore of Dragon Ball that they wouldn't have been able to sense his attack. They wouldn't have really known what was going on. Maybe they all could have become Muzaru and tried to hold it off, but, you know, Frieza would have just transformed further. Not that they knew that, but, you know, that could have happened. Anyway, just like in the movie, Bardock did try and unleash a key blast towards this attack, but... You know, it does explain it a bit more in depth than what it seemed in the movie, but you know, it kind of just played out kind of similar to the movie where his attack was just eaten up by Freeze's attack and then he was left exhausted. It literally states that that Bardock was exhausted and when the key attack from Freeza hit him and Planet Vegeta, he had no energy to even remotely resist it. So now on to another interesting claim. On page 65 of the Dragon Ball Super Broly light novels, Beerus seems to be pronounced the strongest God of Destruction. Basically when commenting on Whis, that Whis is even stronger than the universe's strongest destructive God. Obviously the word universe can be implied to be all, even all of the universes, or it could be a singular universe, but we all know there's only one destructive God in Universe 7. It's basically a comparison to all the other destructive gods of destructions. Basically this is a comment saying Beerus is the strongest. This wouldn't be a surprise to many of you, but I know a lot of people still have a little bit of doubt about it, but you know, it's right there. This is something I have also gone beyond Google Translate to find out as well. And there's, it does get translated certain different ways. One of them even says the universe's strongest God of destruction. By all means guys, like I said, rip the scan off your screen right now. It's on your screen and go and get it translated yourself. Like I said, I'm no authority on translations, but there it is. Okay, so we skip ahead to the actual fight now between Broly and the Saiyans. Of course, there is a lot of things that happen in between that particular point and the fight between Broly, but it is literally just following the movie. It's very close to the movie. You get lots of scans from the movie in there as well. It's very legitimate. It goes in detail about how Broly's adapting and getting stronger with each hit. And on page 134, there's definitely an interesting quote that I believe will excite somebody called Dragon Ball Dave. Now, obviously, there's a lot of conjecture about Saiyan's adaptation mid-battle, and Dave has argued that when they're adapting and getting stronger, they're not actually getting stronger and increasing the cap on their power. They're actually just getting more and more used to that cap and the power, so therefore they're allowed to output more power. I believe it's a bit of both personally, but particularly in the Dragon Ball Super Broly Light novel, it states that Broly is an equal to base Vegeta as base Broly 
in this particular fight. But the reason Vegeta is getting the better of Broly at the beginning is because of his experience and skill. However, Broly with each punch is actually getting closer to Vegeta's level of power, eventually overtaking him. So this would lean towards Dave's interpretation of Saiyan adaptation, that they always just had that ceiling and that they're as they fight, they kind of just get closer and closer to that ceiling. Now on page 134, Vegeta, it does state that Vegeta was actually trying to end the fight when he was a Super Saiyan against Broly, but he couldn't. He felt like he should have been able to end the fight due to the power difference. But this just speaks towards Broly's endurance and durability. On page 135, it even makes a comment on how Broly is basically learning from Vegeta, not only taking Vegeta's moves, but learning how Vegeta moves, his moveset, taking Vegeta's techniques, and even learning from Vegeta's situational judgments. Broly is insane. He literally learns against the person he's fighting and basically takes their moves. Of course, we did see this more clearer in the movie because obviously when Goku uses the God Bind later on in the movie, Broly kind of steals it for himself and overpowers Goku with it. But anyway, so I'm going to move on now to the Super Saiyan God Goku fights against Broly. Um, it was mentioned that Broly wasn't fighting with killing intention against Goku when he was beating the crap out of God Goku. This speaks towards Broly's nature, obviously, and the fact that Broly wasn't actually fighting to kill. He was fighting because, you know, of his Saiyan nature. He makes a lot of references to Saiyan's fighting spirit, and Broly was basically just going along with that, obviously with a massive anger problem at the same time. Obviously, in the movie, Goku stepped in and started fighting Broly in base, and then went up to Super Saiyan and then Super Saiyan God, even though we've just seen Super Saiyan God Vegeta struggle against Broly. Now, Vegeta does struggle against Broly with Super Saiyan God in this as well, but it doesn't sound like he's anywhere near done. It kind of does make that clear, but it also shows Goku using techniques and it kind of explains his techniques as being similar to what we saw in the Dragon Ball Super anime when he was fighting against Super Saiyan Khalifa in his base. Obviously, the other person has more power, but he's using more strategy and martial arts ability using space and you know keeping Broly at bay but eventually it just becomes too much because Broly once again is just learning against Goku and adapting on the spot eventually he has to use Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan God and he just gets pummeled and what I do like about the book is the play-by-plays of the fight itself like I said it's very similar to what happens in the movie it's almost like a move by move one thing it does do is literally names the moves that are actually happening obviously it has to be very descriptive about these moves because you're not actually seeing it in front of you you have having to use your imagination from what you read as the text. And on page 174, when Super Saiyan Blue Goku is fighting against Ikari Broly, this is an interesting point now, guys. It pretty much states that Super Saiyan Blue Goku was stronger than Ikari Broly. I know a lot of people have scaled them to be at very similar levels, especially based on the animation, but the book outright states that Super Saiyan Blue Goku has surpassed Ikari Broly in terms of power. Because the battles in the play-by-plays are so descriptive, you know, you can really see that Goku is actually just beating him up at this point. Obviously with the animation, it kind of shows Goku getting pushed back at one point. I don't think the gap between them is absolutely massive, but it is kind of implying that Super Saiyan Blue Goku was winning the fight. It does seem like Frieza knows this as well, as well as Paragus, and that's why Frieza decides to go for the Super Saiyan route. Now obviously Vegeta ends up joining in against the fight against Super Saiyan Broly, they eventually leave and Broly comes up against Freezer. On page 188, it does state that with a few hits that Golden Freezer was able to slow Broly a little and if he was lucky that Broly would dodge his attacks. This doesn't particularly last for long because it goes on to basically just state how much Freezer was getting slaughtered. But once again, this makes sense given how Freezer was stated by the producer for the Dragon Ball Super Broly movie to have grown by quite a lot. You know, Freezer's always been a very durable character anyway, but it does even make a mention of the fact that it was surprising Freezer had endured this beating for 30 minutes. Of course, we know he endured it for a lot longer than that. We all know it was necessity really, but the Dragon Ball Super Broly Night novels do go out their way to kind of give some sort of reason for the reason Freezer lasted so long. Like I said earlier against God Goku, it was stated that Broly wasn't really fighting with killing intent and it's kind of implied again against Freezer. And there's even a part on page 189 where it states that Broly attacked with the same power as before. So basically, with all the adaptation, Broly seems to be going against everybody else where he was rising in power to match his opponent. 
It sounds like Broly didn't really actually grow in that one hour battle between him and Frieza, well at least according to the Dragon Ball Super Broly light novels. So he was fighting Frieza with the same power and just beating on Frieza with the same power. Of course, the duration of time they lasted was a bit ridiculous. On page 190, another very interesting statement. Now this is definitely going to prick a lot of ears. Piccolo stated upon the site of Base Gogeta that Base Gogeta's energy was higher than that of Super Saiyan Broly's and made Broly's energy feel far away. Guys, that would mean that the fusion of Goku and Vegeta, Meta Man Fusion, Base Gogeta is stronger than Super Saiyan Broly. Of course, in the film, what we really saw was Base Gogeta turn up, dodge and parry a load of Broly's attacks and then go straight to Super Saiyan. And he does do a very similar thing here. Once he gets on the battlefield, he dodges and blocks a load of attacks and then turns Super Saiyan straight away. Now obviously there's a lot of conjectures surrounding fusion but I think a lot of people have come to the conclusion that base fusion whether it's Patara fusion or Metamaran fusion always seems to be stronger than that of the two fusees at the most powerful added together. So you know there's a lot of tens of time statements so if base fusion is tens of times that of Super Saiyan Blue Goku then of course there is a possibility it could be at Super Saiyan Broly's level if not beyond it. Regardless, he turns Super Saiyan, starts landing a few hits, and if that is the case, then Broly starts adapting back to Super Saiyan Gogeta. You know, it isn't too far out there because ultimately Broly did exactly the same when he fought against Super Saiyan Vegeta. He grew over 50 times in the space of a few minutes. Anyway, on to page 194. Now, a lot of things are revealed on this page. It's revealed that Broly, when he realized Frieza could no longer fight back, started taking it easy on Frieza. Like I mentioned earlier, like I keep mentioning, I don't think Broly was supposed to be fighting with killing intent. It really goes over how Broly's kind of a kind-hearted saying in this novel, but ultimately he started taking it easy on Frieza. That's why Frieza was able to last so long, because <laughs> Broly was basically toying with it. Anyway, it also has Frieza state that nobody can beat this version of Broly. Obviously, that's Super Saiyan Broly, not Super Saiyan Full Power Broly. If we're going by the manga, Frieza has seen all the characters that came before this, of course, including all the characters in the Tournament of Power. In fact, even in the anime, he has seen all the characters, including Jiren, Kefla, Hit, etc. Anyway, so <laughs> that's revealed. It's made quite obvious that Broly is pretty much the strongest character just as the character guide pretty much stated it's basically reinforcing that idea on page 201 the battle between Gogeta and Broly comes out of that dimension yes the dimension scene is in the book as well Broly is gasping whereas Gogeta is basically cruising at this point this is Gogeta blue by the way obviously Super Saiyan full power Broly overpowered regular Super Saiyan Gogeta and Gogeta used this as a reason to go to Super Saiyan blue but at this point, you know, like I said, Gogeta Blue is just wiping the floor with Broly. And it really makes it clear, really makes it clear in this book how much Broly is losing to Gogeta Blue. I don't know why anybody seems to think that Broly is as strong or if not stronger than Gogeta Blue. It makes no sense to me. With Super Saiyan Full Power Broly, it's quite obvious he's far above Super Saiyan Gogeta because he starts beating Gogeta in that dimensional place and Gogeta needs to transform and he goes Super Saiyan Blue, not Super Saiyan 2, 3 or God to Blue. That obviously places Super Saiyan Full Power Broly anywhere from Super Saiyan 2 to low Super Saiyan Blue levels but is likely in my eyes in the Super Saiyan God to Super Saiyan Blue range considering the onslaught of attacks he managed to survive. But he literally lands no offensive against Gogeta Blue. He does manage to dodge some attacks though so you know there is a bit of relativeness here and there. Anyway so <laughs> Another thing is as well, I've, I've seen some people saying that Gogeta Blue didn't knock Broly back into Super Saiyan from Super Saiyan Full Power. In the novel on page 207, 207, it notes that Broly's hair goes back to golden as opposed to the greeny yellow colour it is as a full power, or sorry, a legendary Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan Full Power. So Broly does get knocked back down to Super Saiyan after the beating he takes. I have seen some people question the image from the movie itself where you actually see Broly still with the Ikari pupils rather than the green pupils you get as a Saiyan. I don't know if that's just an animation mistake on Toei's part or if it's a nod to the fact that, you know, Broly has stacked Super Saiyan on top of Ikari. But the fact is, he was knocked out of Super Saiyan full power by the power and might of Gogeta Blue. Anyway, on page 208, it really reinforces that idea when Gogeta is charging the Kamehameha, Broly is stated to have lost his fighting spirit at this point. At the power of Gogeta's Kamehameha, Broly doesn't want to fight anymore. 
Of course, he is wished back to Planet Bumper, and that's it. Now, beyond that, obviously, it's basically just the film finishing out. It does go to Frieza, who states that if they can get control of Broly's mind, he is the strongest combatant. So this could be a reference to the fact that Broly's power is the strongest. Once again, it's reinforcing that idea that Broly is the strongest. But if they can bring his mind in order or bring him under control to fight for the Freezer Force, he is the strongest combatant. Guys, this is literally Freezer saying that if Broly is fighting for a cause and has an objective, that he is the strongest. It's not just once he mentions this in this book, he mentions it twice. I believe this is also said in the movie itself. He has seen Ultra Instinct Goku. He knows Goku will potentially get Ultra Instinct again one day. He's seen Jiren, but he thinks Broly is the strongest. And then, of course, on page 220 is the maybe stronger than Beerus quote. I'm just bringing that up to say, look, it's not just in the movie, it's in the light novel as well. In terms of the additional points, they're the main ones. There might be other ones in there, but like I said, guys, this book is 220 plus pages long, and, you know, I can't cover it all in one video. But, you know, if you do feel like you want certain information, do join my Discord, League of Dragons, and just ask and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I can only really provide you with the scans. You know, if you want a particular translator's point of view on that matter, I completely understand. But I think, of course, the most controversial takeaways are, obviously, it's stated multiple times that Broly is the strongest. And, of course, the statement that Beerus is the strongest destructive god. There is another light novel but I've been unable to get my hands on it from Japan. If you're in America, you may have a better chance than what I have in the UK. We're a bit further away than you guys. So that's the Dragon Ball Super Broly light novel by Kusakabi and Akira Toriyama. It's definitely a fun read. You know, I really do like the play-by-play -play of the fights. It really actually brings the action more to light somehow than the animation itself. It's hard to explain, but you know, you can order it from Japan. It's not too expensive. Anyway guys, thanks for watching. If you want me to cover more of the guides, I could always cover the Konzenshu guides as well as the super exciting guides. Amongst other guides, I have them all. Let me know if you want to see that down in the comment section. Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Smash that like button. Lend the Daishink in your energy. Until next time, Ad Astra.